Hello everyone, we're here with Jojo Burgess and he is the official footwear partner of the 71st Miss Universe. Hi Jojo, it's nice to talk to you here in New Orleans. Thank you Miss Janet, super happy to be here. Thank you so much for yeah. having me tonight. Well, tell me about how you got into this gig, uh, the history. Okay, I first did the Miss Universe uh, pageant last 69th edition that happened in Miami, Florida. And then um, for the 71st edition, they invited me if I can be a partner again. And then I just want to do it. I just want to come back and then enjoy it. Because the very first time I wasn't really able to enjoy it. It's the first time. I don't know the people that much. And then now I, I know everybody. So uh -huh. more than being stressed, I'm just enjoying it. But who got you the first time? Did somebody invite you to join? Or how did they discover you? Okay. Um, it was on the midst of pandemic when Sean McLean uh, called me up asking me if I wanted to do the shoes for the show. Mm -hmm. The very first time I was invited, I thought it's a scam. Because, hi, my name is Sean McLean. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering whether you want, wanted to be, become a partner for the 69th edition. Then eventually I found out that Mario Garcia was actually the one who said that maybe you can try this guy. He's kind of famous in the Philippines doing pageant shoes. And then I accepted it. Oh, so you've been doing already pageant shoots and shoes in the Philippines. I've been doing it for the last eight years. Oh, what's your background in your studies? I'm actually a licensed nurse in midwife. <laughs> oh and, my God. And I never thought that I would be doing shoes. Huh? So how did you end up doing shoes from nursing to making shoes? I think it's a beautiful accident. Um, all my life, I thought I would become a doctor. And then, you know, when you're young and you're in love and then suddenly you become heartbroken, um, you feel like it's, you know, it's the end of the world. And I tried taking my own life at some point. Mm. And then my mom um, talked to my other tita saying that maybe Jojo could stay in Pinangon and Rizal in order for him to have a new environment. And then, you know, the Filipinos, when um, you're at the new place, they will try to show you around, will introduce you to a lot of uh, relatives. And then one day on our way home, my tita said, that's an old shoe factory. And um, I got really curious because all my life, I don't even love shoes that much. And all my life, I haven't seen a shoe factory. And then I went inside. It's been closed for like how many years already? And I'm, I'm talking to the old owners. And then suddenly the owner said, do you want to buy it? So I bought the factory, not for me to do shoes, but actually just for, for me to be busy. You know, when you're down and depressed, you feel like one day is very long. So I just finding like a new avenue in order for me to, you know, get my mind off things. And then um, the rest is history. Oh my gosh. And so there's, there are no regrets? No, I feel like I found my new life in um, doing shoes. The very first time I'm doing it for the first um, months, um, I don't really like the art of doing shoes. But one day, there's a special case. Like, I got a debutante with foot deformity. It's called Pescagus. The foot is like this. Mm -hmm. And she's having a uh, debut. And um, the mother said all her life, the kid wasn't able to wear closed shoes. So I just accepted the project in order for me to earn some more money for additional capital. But after I finished the shoes and we did the fitting, the mother appreciated so much and then hugged me and said, thank you. And she was crying and then I started crying too. So I've been trying to be tough for a very long time. And then I feel like I just needed a hug. So all the questions of like questioning my existence, like questioning my worth as a person, everything changed during that moment. And then I told myself, I'm going to be doing shoes for the rest of my life. And mostly you're doing pageant shoes, not any other kind of shoes. I started doing uh, footwears that are for regular people, like the regular consumers. But uh, 2014, a good friend of mine joined Beanie Beating Filipinas, uh, Yvette Santiago. And then I said, during that time, I don't have the money to support her, but I said, all the shoes that you need, I can give it to you. And then Stella Marquez Araneta, the owner of Beanie Beating Filipinas, uh, noticed my shoes and invited me to come over to their office and said, do you want to be uh, the official footwear provider for the 2015 show? And then during that time, I'm, I don't have any idea that Bini Bini Pilipinas is big. So I just said, yeah. Mm. And then eventually when I, um, being part of Bini Bini Pilipinas, it's a really, really big show. And during that time, Pia was about one. And I was able also to provide shoes for her as she competed for Miss Universe. So 
after seeing Pia won Miss Universe, it's my dream to be in the Miss Universe stage. So I know it will happen. I just don't know when. So finally, when the time comes, the 2021, I was invited. It's like a surreal feeling that the thing that I've been dreaming for the longest time doing pageant shoes, will, I will be part of it. Never expected it. Wow. What kind of shoes do you make for the pageant uh, contestants? Like, is there a style, that okay. specific style that you do? Okay, for the style of the pageant shoes, usually we go for a certain messaging. So for the last uh, 69th edition, it's inclusivity that we want to push. So I prefer, I prepared three shades of blue, um, the, the cream, the caramel, and the cocoa, depending on the skin tone, and then the silver pair. And then the Miss Universe like, Miss Universe like that idea, and then we're doing the same thing. But um, usually we are presenting three designs and then the Miss Universe organization will go to choose which design they think is best for the show. So every year there's a different style? This is my second year. So the first year is different. The second, this, this season is also different. Does it have to be in conjunction with the theme of the festival, of the pageant? Um, is there a theme? Usually they wanted like a design that will be best for the show you know there's the, the beauty queens walk a certain way mm -hmm. and uh, they act a certain way so you just need to make sure that the shoes are sturdy in good condition in order for them to do their pasarela mm -hmm. but i guess with this uh, edition they like the design named marine the story behind marine is uh, something that they like i presented three design and after i shared why i designed that shoes they started I, they said um we we want this design to be part of the show Mm -hmm. And how high should the hills be? It depends on the organization, but um, this um, shoes wow. is four inches with wow. no platform. So it's kind of hard to balance in four inches if there's no proper engineering when it comes to shoes. But I'm very proud that um, even though it took us eight months to do the product development, mm -hmm. finally the Moving Shoes is debuting for the first time in the Miss Universe stage. And I was able to talk to some of the contestants um, during the photo shoot for the Bragais ad, and everybody loves it. So um, I'm very happy and proud that everything that we're doing and showcasing here is made in the Philippines. Oh, what kind of materials are you using? Materials is mostly made of leather, but we customize the outsoles. It's mostly for stage. It's the stage uh, that they're using for the show is kind of slippery. Mm. So I need to make sure that they can turn safely and um yeah mm -hmm. and they can dance in it oh pretty sure yeah they can even run with mushrooms <laughs> so it's very light mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's made for for stage mm -hmm. and do you outsource this to as well do you, for the work 90 percent of the materials that we're using for the shoes are being outsourced because even though it's sad we don't really have a manufacturing for local materials in in the philippines so there are some locally available materials, but it's not of um, best quality. So in my company, I always aspire to do and give the best of what we can, because it's not just my brand, I'm representing Philippines. So I want to make sure that all the 83 contestants from all over the world will be able to say that the, the shoes that are made in the Philippines are the best. Mm -hmm. And I would like to carry that pride as a Filipino. That's great. What's the most challenging thing about making shoes? Most challenging. Hmm. I've been doing this for the last eight years and um, I find it easy, but I guess the challenge is like sending the shoes from, from the Philippines going here to the US because we have a partner, which is FedEx, but sometimes, you know, the logistics uh, cost or the shipping cost is too much, but um, we were able to find a way to, you know, merge with a partnership and um, I only signed the contract last first week of December and the shoes should be here before the new year. Mm -hmm. So my workers have been working on the shoes um, for the holidays and I feel bad for them, but I'm very happy to share this moment with them because it's not just me, it's my workers mm -hmm. working very hard in order for this to be possible. Do you, look, do you see yourself making shoes for men or kids as well? I'm actually diversifying. Mm -hmm. I've launched some um, shoes for men. I got some leather bags, um, belts. Mm -hmm. And um, that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to do the second edition because I wanted people to know that it's not just patting shoes that I'm capable of doing. So 
the last 2022 i spent it most on product development mm. in this 2023 i will be releasing and launching more lines which is not just for pageant but for working women um for men as well so mm -hmm. you're on the artistic side do you have a business partner or you do both i'm actually standing as the ceo of, oh. of the company sometimes it's very hard to become artistic and to become logical sometimes it's very hard so i was able to put up a team that could help me out with things so i got like 100 plus workers working for me and um, i was able to uh, create departments that could work hand in hand and then grow the company mm -hmm. so i think i was able to establish that mm -hmm. i do understand how business works and i do understand how design works so sometimes i go on the creative side and sometimes i go on the business side mm -hmm. i belong to a business family so oh, i got a, i got a background where did you get the business acumen i think from my mom mm -hmm. and my dad also he will what did they if, do? I, if i will not mention my dad um they 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 taught us how to you know manage people and i'm i belong to a political family so mm -hmm. growing up i know how to deal with people so i was able to use that now that i'm handling my own so are you the eldest in the family how many i'm i'm the youngest you're the youngest mm -hmm. oh, four wow and your siblings are the same like they're into business our parents when we were younger are trying to push for us to do business because they see that business is the only thing that will make somebody successful but along the way they tend to respect that not every one of us will go the same path mm -hmm. and um some of them are like working mm -hmm. and then my sister just wanted to be a plain housewife mm -hmm. you know he she got a cat business anything that related to cats and like breeding yeah. cats my brother my other brother is an engineer mm -hmm. and the other one is doing business also mm -hmm. where do you think you got this drive drive i started the um, when i started the business like what i've said is during one of my lowest point in my life and the drive most likely is like um I don't know, like if you can say like revenge, I wanted to make sure that somebody who have heard of me will regret the thing that she did. It's mostly personal, but along the way, the drive is like the responsibility that I have with my workers. Mm -hmm. I have workers that cannot read, cannot write. And you know, in the Philippines, mm -hmm. if you're not a high school graduate or if you're not a college graduate, there's a lesser opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. So I now understand how it is to become a leader and the responsibility that I have with my people. And I want to make sure that as I grow the company, my workers also grow with me. So responsibility gets me going. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like I'm going crazy with the things that I'm doing. There's a lot of things that I need to finish. But if I can see my workers, I know that they have simple family, they got dreams also, and I want to be that somebody who can understand them in a way. And um, if I could provide opportunities for them, I will. Wow. You seem so young to me, like you were just in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but your thoughts are very mature. You know, you're like an old soul. <laughs> I feel like I've been through a lot of pain. You know, only people who understand and been in the dark will be able to, you know, see the light better. And I always would want to speak from the heart because I was able to overcome those pain and those struggles and those traumas that I have. And now I can talk freely about it and mm -hmm. eventually inspire people. Mm -hmm. But how do you relax? You know, you told me you sometimes get stressed, uh -huh. you go crazy. How do you relax? Uh, relax. I usually drink. <laughs> <laughs> And then party out with friends. Mm -hmm. um, my other talent is creating parties. <laughs> so I Party usually, planner. <laughs> yeah, so I usually create parties at my house with my close friends. And that's it. And then travel. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love to travel because I, I see different perspectives. I get to understand culture. Some of the things that are acceptable in other countries are not acceptable in the Philippines. So you tend to have a deeper sense of respect for indifferences. Mm -hmm. so. What was the most interesting place you, you went to? Japan. Oh, why? Because in Japan, you know, the discipline is different. Like, people are traditional, but at the same time, it's a very progressive country. Mm -hmm. So you know that the values in the core of a person is actually very important for a, for a nation to be progressive. So I see my company like a little nation that I would want to create the 
values and principles that we value in order for us to move forward and sticking to the values that we have as a company. So, uh, where did you get your education in nursing? In Beacon University. Oh. In Beacon. <laughs> And do you speak other languages aside from English, Tagalog? Bicol, I'm very fluent. Ah, very fluent. Okay. Why don't you greet our televiewers in Bicol? Ah, uh, just marin na bangge po sa sa hindi ka boss. Um, sobrang mo agma ako na yana ako ngon yun sa show na ini. I'm hoping that I will be able na makamit kita kada ako pang Bicol na nadibio sa United States. Wow, very good. Thank you very much for joining us tonight and Thank you. giving time to us and sharing your stories. Very inspirational. Thank I'm so much. impressed with you and I'm more power to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.